Hey everyone, Mike here with Electrek, and today we're testing out the Admotor Moton M66, an electric moped that you can get right on Amazon. Let's take it for a ride. The Admotor M66 R7 follows the typical step-through moped design with a low-slung frame and a long padded saddle. There's enough room up there for two riders, and you even get strong fold-down passenger foot pegs to give your rider a nice secure feeling. Now something that immediately sets this particular moped-style e-bike apart from the others is the inclusion of a foot platform for the rider. Theoretically, you can put your feet up on this platform, though in actual use I found it to be a bit odd feeling since it left your knees kind of high up. Maybe this would be comfortable for some riders who don't want to rest their feet on the pedals, but I guess I'm old fashioned because I'm a feet on the pedals kind of guy. In terms of performance, the bike follows your standard class 2 specs, meaning a rear 750 watt motor. That powers the bike up to a top speed of 20 miles per hour. In practice, I was able to go into the settings and remove the speed limit, which got me closer to around 22.5 miles per hour. Not a huge gain, but any extra speed is always nice. The battery is a fairly common 48 volt and 14 amp hour unit for 672 watt hours of capacity. They'll tell you that can get you a maximum range of 50 miles or so, but as usual, that's the ideal conditions range when you're using something like level 1 pedal assist. If you're a throttle heavy rider, Half of that range is more reasonable than the full range, and maybe you'll hit two-thirds if you're doing some actual pedal assist on level 2 or 3. The pedal assist does go up to level 5, but it's just a basic cadence sensor, not a fancier torque sensor, so if you put it all the way up at level 5, it's basically working like full throttle. The only problem with pedal assist on this bike, which is pretty much the same problem that most electric moped style e-bikes have, is that the frame is not really meant for good pedaling form. You get that high knees thing again, since you can't adjust the seat. I found that scooching forward or backward on the seat could help me get close to comfortable, but still, this is definitely not a typical pedaling e-bike, so you should not expect to spend hours pedaling this thing. It's just not a comfortable long-term pedaler. This is a getting around moped, so most people are going to ride it on throttle only. Yeah, you can pedal, the pedal assist works just fine and it's doable, it's just not ideal with this type of frame and saddle. These moped style e-bikes have trade-offs and poor pedaling ergonomics is one of them. That being said, what you lose in pedaling ergonomics, you gain in overall ergonomics. The saddle is nice and comfortable, it's nicely padded, and you get these high bars which give you a sort of cruiser feel. Really the only odd ergonomics issue is how far you have to reach to get back to that rear mounted kickstand. Now generally I do like when the kickstand is this far back, it means it doesn't get caught in the pedals when you're pushing the bike backwards. The problem is it's so far back that it's kind of hard to engage while you're on the bike. Ugh. Obviously it's not a huge deal and some people will just hop off and then engage the kickstand, or they'll remember to kick it up before they get on the bike, but if you do forget, it's a bit of a reach to get back there. Otherwise I'm pretty happy with the feel and the design of the frame and the geometry. You even get 80 millimeters of suspension travel from that dual crown fork up front. While you could theoretically do some off-roading or dual sport riding thanks to that front suspension, it's not like this is a serious off-road e-bike, so don't expect to go all Evil Knievel on me. This is really an urban-oriented moped with a bit of front suspension to smooth out the ride. And that's where this bike really excels. It comes with full metal fenders and lights, which are both important features for commuters and urban riders. And I like those mag wheels, since you don't have to worry about individual spokes loosening up over time or coming out of true, especially if you were to bang your wheel on something in the city, which is a pretty common occurrence for a lot of us that use our bikes for utility purposes. Now one of my immediate criticisms of the bike is related to the lighting, and it's that the rear light is not powered by the main e-bike battery. That means eventually it's going to run out of juice and you're going to have to swap the batteries. I really hate that when manufacturers don't just run everything off of the main pack. It does have one advantage, which is that the light will work even if your main battery is dead and you're left pedaling home at night, and that might be an excuse for having a system like this, but outside of that one very specific case, it's really annoying to me to not have the lights run off of the main battery. The headlight does, so why not have the taillight do it too? 
The only other complaint I might lay against the company here is that they did not include hydraulic disc brakes. At this price, I would have appreciated the maintenance and power advantages of juice brakes. That's not to say that these mechanical brakes aren't fine. I should be clear and say that they are totally sufficient. It's just that we have more elegant solutions, and for $1,999, the current price of the bike, hydraulic brakes would have been a nice inclusion. But other than the rear light and the brakes, everything else checks my boxes. I think there are other interesting electric mopeds out there for similar or lower prices that also offer a lot of utility, but AdMotor definitely contributes to variety in the industry, and even has some color options that I don't normally see in this class of moped. The yellow one is particularly nice in my opinion, so there's some added opportunity here for riders that still haven't found quite what they're looking for. If this bike was a couple hundred bucks cheaper, I'd say it'd be a more compelling offering, but it's still a great e-bike at this price, it feels well made, it offers nice accessory options, and it's an enjoyable ride. I mean, ultimately it's hard not to have fun on e-bikes like these. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed that review of the AdMotor Moton M66. If you did, why don't you give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of our future electric vehicle videos. We'll see you here next time.